I'm Hannah Stauffer, and this is my brother Luke. Ever since we were little, Dad and Mom have taught us about wild animals. Yeah, some of them even lived at home with us. Luke wasn't born when we had the fishers in our house. Oh, oh. But you remember the mountain goat. Spike really likes his bottle. That's right. And the bears. I love bears. <laughs> I guess baby bears are some of our family's favorite animals. For us, there's nothing quite as cute as a cub. Many types of babies are commonly called cubs, but this mother moose has a baby calf. And a mother mountain goat ewe will cuddle up with her baby kid. This baby is a fawn. A cub is a young carnivorous mammal, like these little mountain lions, but we often call them kittens. These are wolf cubs, but sometimes I call them puppies. And arctic fox cubs are also called kits. Luke, do you know what kind of animals would live here? It's wolverines. This ferocious animal has been nicknamed skunk bear because it smells like a skunk and looks like a bear. This is obviously a mother wolverine and her babies are definitely cubs. The cubs are born in the spring and stay with her until the fall. They don't look so ferocious. Don't let them fool you. These cubs may be cute now, but wolverines will eat anything they can get their paws on, dead or alive. Many a trapper has been frustrated because one wolverine can ruin his entire trap line. They're notorious for their gluttonous behavior. That means big appetite. That's why I like them. They're small, but they're still tough.
Well, the cubs we really want to talk about are the bear cubs. And some of the very cutest bear cubs live right up by Santa Claus on the polar ice cap in Alaska. Even though the polar bear mother gave birth to her cubs in winter, about January, the new family won't come out of their den until springtime. Luke, did you know that newborn polar bears weigh just a bit more than one pound? Wow, that's less than I weighed when I was born. Yeah, a lot less. One paw of a big polar bear weighs as much as you do, and male bears can weigh almost a ton. Is that bigger than that? Yeah, it would be like having ten dads. Look, Hannah, the bear bear cub is different on the smaller one. Kind of like me and you, huh, Luke? Yeah. Baby animals always wrestle and play with each other. It helps make them stronger and more prepared to deal with life in the wild. And other polar bears, even the cub's own father, can be dangerous. Polar bears really only have one predator to fear, humans. But the Arctic can be harsh, food can be scarce, This cub's biggest problem is getting back up the hill. Remember the cubs at the zoo? Yeah, they sure are cute. About 70% of the time, mother bears give birth to twins and then take care of them. But sometimes in a zoo, the mothers forget how. These two cubs were abandoned by their mother and raised by the zookeepers. With a lot of hard work and care, the cubs survived and grew up to be strong enough to wrestle with each other. What are they eating? Dog food and some stuff called Espelac. That's a baby formula for puppies. It has half and half and vitamin and mineral supplements added. Polar bear milk is the richest bear milk. It's very high in fat and protein and has three times the calories of our mother's milk. The crowds outside waiting to see the cubs could catch a glimpse of their mother diving for lunch.
In the wild, polar bears are primarily carnivorous and prefer seals, but they have been known to capture small whales. Wow, these little cups could grow up and eat a whale? Yeah, even though right now they like to chew on radio antenna. And they seem about as dangerous as teddy bears. Speaking of teddy bears... That's Grizz, the grizzly cub that Dad raised. Come on, time for a little lunch. Dad brought this little cub from a zoo in Oklahoma City to the Colorado mountains to raise it. He made a movie about seeing a male grizzly in the forest and thinking he could introduce the female cub when she was grown to the male. The whole point of the film was to get people thinking about bringing grizzly bears back into the Colorado wilderness. Bears belong in the wild. Yes, they do. And that's what Dad thinks, too. In the movie, he spent a whole year teaching Grizz how to hunt and fish and behave like a wild bear. Dad loves Grizz like a real child, but she has grown up and he knows he must leave her so she can enter her den. As the seasons pass, it won't be long until winter. Where she will hibernate. Yes, although hibernation for bears does not mean they are entirely inactive. Their body temperature decreases only slightly, and they could become awake and active, if disturbed, in a matter of minutes. The pine martin is still outside hunting while a grizzly mother bear is giving birth. But why are the cubs so small? Since the mother is not eating, she only has her fat reserves to nourish the babies. And I don't know why, but while they're inside of her, they can't share her fat. But once they're born, they can through nursing. So the cubs are born very small and keep growing in the shelter of the den. Meanwhile, in a nearby den, a black bear mother is experiencing the same miracle. Her cubs are even smaller. How small? Only half a pound, about the same as an orange.
While the snow continues to fall, the cubs continue to grow. Bears mate in summer, and as many as five eggs are fertilized. Then, almost magically, the development of the eggs is suspended until autumn. But why? The number of eggs that become implanted will depend on the food supply. If the mother can find plenty of food to eat, maybe all five eggs will become babies. But if there is no food, then maybe none of the eggs will implant. This process helps the mother survive and ensures better chances for the cubs. Meanwhile, back in the grizzly den, the cubs have grown. As the days lengthen and the winter melts into spring, everything awakens. When a grizzly mother and her cubs leave the den, she is skinny and hungry from eight months of fasting. The feisty cubs are filled with curiosity and childhood enthusiasm. The same goes for the black bear family. Black bears generally live in heavily wooded areas, and grizzlies prefer more open country. But occasionally, the two will meet. And when two cubs meet, they have fun. Grizzly cubs are born a little bigger, but they grow to be much bigger than black bears. Sometimes black bears aren't black. That's right. In the east, they are generally black. But in the west, they can be just about any color, even white or blue-gray. Often, the cinnamon-colored black bear is mistaken for a grizzly. How do you know the difference? Their feet, for one thing. Black bear claws are short and dark-colored, while grizzly claws are much longer and light-colored. Also, a grizzly has a hump on its shoulders like a bison. And the black bear's fur is shorter. That makes the grizzly cub look even bigger. But not bigger than the black bear mom. Come on over this way. We're going to go down here by the creek. Ah, here look at this. Have. have you ever seen a bear in the wild? Well, Luke. Back before you were born, one time when Mom and Dad took me camping, we had to walk a long way. I can't carry all the way. Don't drag those feet. I'll give you a hand. You're getting better, though. You, we had to carry you. 
You, you, couldn't, you couldn't even carry an orange or an apple in your pack. <laughs> now you've got oranges and apples and things for shadow, huh? These pretty orange flowers, do you know what they're called? Red, yeah, you know what these are called? Indian paint brushes. Shadow. Did the Indian used to paint with us? I think they did. Just like they did with the Indian lines. Shadow came along with us. Then, when Shadow and I were off by ourselves, a big, huge bear came right up to me and growled. Oh no, were you scared? Nah, I wasn't scared at all. Well, maybe a little bit. Now I know that black bears are mainly vegetarians and much prefer blackberries to little girls. Wow, where are all these bears? Along the McNeil River in Alaska. During the salmon run, the fish are abundant and the bears feast. The falls create a natural barrier for the fish, which makes it easier for the bears to catch them. At first, the starved mother hoards her catch, but then she begins to share. These cubs are still nursing, and they are just starting to eat food. McNeil River Bears are the same size as the smaller grizzlies and the larger Kodiak Bears. People up here refer to these big coastal bears as brown bears. It looks like our mom is having a cub. You could put it that way, Luke. Sometimes human babies are even called cubs. And just like the bears, Mom is ready to have her little human cub in the spring. Unlike the bears, though, Dad will help love and care for this cub. And older sisters won't move away when they're only two. Lucky for you, Luke. Unlike most animals, human siblings stay around and develop lifelong relationships. I was always ready to play with you, and even before you were born, I was giving you love and attention. Some believe that the many similarities between the man cub and the bear cub create an innate fear humans have of bears. Both cubs have a relatively long gestation period, a lengthy childhood spent under their mother's care, and become large intelligent omnivores which occupy the same ecological niche. Although humans lack a keen sense of smell and lag behind bears in their alert hearing, acute vision, and surprising speed, Bears cannot compete with our brains and the advantages we have established with our opposable thumbs. I'm not afraid of bear cubs. But in the wild, the bear's habitat and numbers are shrinking. 
When we had Cinnamon, Blackie, and Bear at home with us, we fed them and played with them. No, most people are not afraid of cute animal babies, while human population and encroachment is dramatically increasing. This has created competition for the same homes between people and bears. I hope the bears don't disappear in the wild. I think almost everybody agrees with that. Bears are an important part of our ecology, as well as popular characters in mythology, folklore, fairy tales, and legends. <laughs> Um. <laughs> and besides, who can resist smiling at the playful charm of a cub? Wolverines, wolves, and bears. They're all really cute when they're babies. I like polar bears best. Last week you said you like the wolverines best. Yeah, and grizzlies. Dad likes grizzlies ever since he raised Grizz. Well, whichever cub you like best, they all deserve our understanding. If you live in bear country, make sure you help the bears by never feeding them or leaving out trash where they can get it. Yeah, help the bears. And all of nature's cubs. Remember, there's nothing quite as cute, cute as, as a, a cub. cub. Until next time, enjoy, enjoy our wild America. America.